Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 186. And today we're going to talk about students and how they can interact with other students. Specifically, what can we do to encourage our students to be amazing creators in the classroom and how can we support them? I've got two amazing guests on the show today to talk a little bit about how they're supporting students around the world. But before we bring them on today, Sue Vincent, how are you today? Welcome back to Ask the Tech Coach. I am great. It's great to be here on um, this eve of the last day before spring break on this day that we're recording. So I'm very excited for some upcoming time off. It is that time. It is that time of year. You know, spring break is coming. We're actually recording this the day before April Fool's Day. So I know we're all kind of looking forward to seeing what the kids have in store for us as we go through here. But as you're listening to this, we're in the middle of April and I hope everybody's doing well. The weather's getting warm. You know, Sue, today we're talking all about how can teachers and especially coaches support students as creators i've got a lot of kids in my class and in my school that are out there doing some great things tiktok videos youtube videos do you get an opportunity to work with your students in a creative way sometimes yes and not as much as i would like to because of scheduling and being from one school to another But yes, here lately, I've been working with a few students, um, one actually individual just on some assistive technology stuff, but he's learning some of these things with Screencastify and Grammarly and Moat, and he's coming up with all kinds of great stuff. So I'm very proud of him. But then with book clubs and things like that in our fourth and fifth grade classes, they're learning how to um, do some screencasting and um, again, um, hoping to learn more about this from our uh, guest co-host tonight as we talk about peer-to-peer learning. You know, in my classrooms, we've been doing a lot of stuff with video making too, playing with Wii Video, playing with Screencastify, as you mentioned. And I found the best way to help students become creators is just to step back and let them do it. The other day I was working with a bunch of kids and I said, here, here's my mouse. And I just, I I stood in the back of the room and kind of watched the magic happen. And that is so amazing. And and I think that's the best part of the job, watching these students get up there and try something. And before you know it, they're teaching each other. Absolutely. You might be out there listening, saying, how do I learn all about this? Where do I go? We have a brand new online course on our Facebook group. You can head on over to askthetechcoach.com. And we are creating these things called, uh, what is it called on Facebook? They're they're groups, they're online courses. Guides. Guides, that's the word. And so each and every week when we put out an episode of Ask the Tech Coach, we are building an online course, a guide around that. So we hope that you guys check out all the great stuff over there. Head on over to askthetechcoach.com. You can click to join our free Facebook group, our Instructional Coaches Membership Group. We would love to have you guys there. Tell us what you guys are doing and tell us how you're helping your students become creative. My first guest is somebody who is a returning uh, member of the TeacherCast family. He is the creator of an amazing application called Tract. I want to bring on my good friend, Miss Ari Memar. Ari, how are you today? Welcome back to TeacherCast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be back my second time and uh, hoping it's just as much fun as the last. I am so happy that you are here today because we are talking about something that I know you're extremely passionate about, helping students create platforms to help other students. This whole concept of peer-to-peer learning. Um, how are you, first of all? And talk to us a little bit about Tract and what's it up to these days? I'm doing great. I'm feeling as energized as ever. Uh, Thanks to all the kids and amazing tech coaches and teachers we work with every day. Um, Things are going incredibly well. And what I can tell you about Tract is it is the first place for kids to teach kids online. Uh, It's a way to channel that motivation every kid has to become a creator, YouTube, TikTok creator. And then you hear it, you're like, oh no, you're cringing. Like, 
no, don't get caught in the consumerism box unboxing trends, like do something productive, do something impactful. And I think that's the beauty of introducing kids to creating in a safe academic setting, especially that you can channel that motivation towards their academic pursuits. And all of a sudden, the process of becoming a creator and being creative and using me media, especially video, uh, is not too dissimilar from project-based learning. And I think that's the, that's, that's the magic, especially when kids don't realize that they're learning and are now going deeper and deeper from you know, maybe entry-level projects to becoming teachers and actually doing their own inquiry-based research and becoming experts on all sorts of different topics. And like you said, uh, a lot of times they know a lot more than us and a lot more than me. I learn from them every single day. So it's just so much fun seeing uh, how creative they are and what they're capable of. You just mentioned it. it it's, it's sort of like project-based learning, but it is inquiry-based learning. And since we had our last show, uh, uh, you know, wow, it seems like a long time ago, but it was during the pandemic. I guess it's an official way of putting it. You know, I took the stuff that we talked about, and I'm going to make sure that the links are in the show notes here for episode 186. And I started doing lessons with my students in my elementary school where they were in charge of their learning. You know, I had a teacher come to me and say, look, we want to have the kids learn about animals. I said, great, give them the platform. Let them do the research. Let them make the videos. Let them lead this thing. Let them have their way with this project. And I got to tell you, giving the kids the ability to to teach themselves, learn for themselves, build the projects. That was awesome. And just to sit back as a coach and watch them explore and experience all this stuff, Ari, it was absolutely amazing. But you have an opportunity every single day to work with school districts all across the, the world here. How did Track start? And, and what's been your biggest, biggest smile, I would say, over the last couple of years working with students across the world? Well, you know, Track started in kind of, I think, a similar way to most companies that start. Uh, there was two people, myself and Esther, who had formed a relationship over many years. She was my teacher at Palo Alto High School for three years. She was my younger sister's teacher. And unlike a lot of teachers, I kept in, in contact with her uh, post-graduation. And I kind of reached a point in my life where I said, I want to be working on the most impactful thing ever. I've come to my own personal conclusion that that is helping supporting kids and helping unlock each and every one of their potentials to becoming the best, most impactful creator possible. And that led me to reconnect with Esther. Uh, I just kind of wanted to learn like, hey, how can I get more involved? And my first job was as an art and science camp counselor. So I still to that moment hadn't had a job that was more fulfilling than working with kids at that camp. And when we started talking, I started realizing that the power of her pedagogy, which I distill into peer-to-peer -peer instruction, project-based learning, that's student-directed. And she had, she had at the time, uh, grown the largest student-run media program in the United States. And I was a part of that. And she was California Teacher of the Year while I was there. Um, what, what that pedagogy was, was not too dissimilar to what was actually happening online with kids wanting to become YouTube TikTok creators and wanting to teach and the resonance that was having amongst a younger audience as those kids wanted to learn from them. And I really felt like a lot of these other platforms out there were maybe incentivizing the wrong behaviors. They were not moderated. They were not kid friendly. The greatest entertainment value always rose to the top. And I really felt like there was an opportunity for the creators that truly were up and coming, maybe needed a bit more support, and the creators who had something really uh, important to say, something that was a little bit more trusted, vetted, academic, they needed a place where they could share with a real audience and they needed support because most kids are not creators. Like I hate to say that, but most kids are consumers watching very passively and they're scared to put out a lot of their work. They don't necessarily have the confidence. They don't necessarily have the skills yet. And it can be very easy to just get trapped into that passive cycle, never really figure out what you're passionate about, never really figure out what you're interested in, never really connect the academic topics you learn about to uh, you know, the real world. And that's the big disconnect that we saw. And I think about pandemic especially, like you said, exposed some of the challenges in our system and simultaneously also showed that we are now connected and we all have connected devices. So, you know, looking at the glass half full, 
I saw that as an opportunity to, you know, provide something that could, you know, really support our educators, our students, our parents in a way that, you know, wasn't available before because a lot of the technology out there was just not built for kids, especially when it comes to media creation. You can find out more information about Tract over on their website, tract.app. And Ari, you brought somebody special with you today uh, onto the show. Why don't you introduce our next guest? Yeah, I'm really excited to introduce Megan. She is, uh, you know, one of the most incredible instructional tech coaches that I've worked with. Um, I can't remember how she found us, but as soon as we connected, like we kind of hit it off right away. And I can see now having uh, worked with the teachers at her school, worked with the students at her school. I mean, there's an incredible culture there. The kids are absolutely incredible. Some of the most impressive kids that, you know, I've worked with. Um, so it's been an absolute pleasure uh, working with everyone from her community and awesome to have her here today because this podcast is all about uh, coaches and she is a coach. I am not a coach. So uh, she's probably uh, amongst family here more so than I am. Thank you so much, Ari. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's um, yes. When Ari and I first met, it was because a teacher told me about Tract. She said, you got to see this. This is so cool. And uh, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I was a little unsure. I'm like, YouTube for school, I guess, is kind <laughs> of how I digested it, um, which, I mean, completely makes sense. Um, but then once I saw what the kids were doing with it, I realized that it was so much more than that. And yeah, our kids have just taken it and run with it. And I'm just super impressed with what they've done. And just to go off what Ari was saying with project-based learning, I feel like project-based learning is so 10 years ago. <laughs> and all of the educators are talking about problem-based learning now, right? They add that little R in and that's the level that it it takes it to. So they're not just making something for no reason, right? They're creating something with a purpose. And that's why our kids love it. Megan, welcome to the show. Um, you are a K-12 instructional technology coach. Talk to us a little bit about your program. Uh, you were saying earlier, you are you are it. You got K-12. to <laughs> I, I am incredibly blessed in my school district. I have an amazing administrative team and IT department and they support our teachers and our kids in everything that they are passionate about and they do their best to provide all of those opportunities so um yeah i'm incredibly blessed i have a, a little over three thousand students and i work k-12 to so i can be in a second grade classroom one day and working with seniors the next day and uh that's the other great thing about tract it's Tech tools, uh, all instructional coaches know this, the best tech tools have a, what do they say, a low floor and a high ceiling, right? So really young kids can get into it and they can do simple stuff on it. And then our older kids can also get into it and create amazing content and they can grow with it. And so that's another reason why Tract is high on my list of, of digital tech tools. That's just, it, it's, it's just such a great tool. I like that saying. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sorry. So how did you like get your kids and your, well, your teachers on board to then get the kids on board doing this with Trent Well, Megan? teachers like to talk. Um, as we all know, uh, word spreads fast in the lunchroom. So when something works, you know, teachers tend to share that with other teachers. And so it really only took one teacher. It took one teacher saying, hey, I heard about this. I think I'm going to try it. And then also the nice thing about Tract is they do all that onboarding for you. So it's minimal work for teachers, which was really convenient for me because if I couldn't always be there for an onboarding session, I was like, hey, Tract has you, like they'll help you get everything set up. It's, you know, the... so that was also really nice. Um, and then there, were, there was a couple situations where teachers came to me with issues. For an example, um, the gifted teacher came to me and said, hey, I really want, I've got all these gifted kids and they have all these passions, they have all of these strengths, but I'm concerned that some of them aren't getting an opportunity to use their strengths. So how do I give them that opportunity? And I was like, I got it. 
tracked. So we got all of her kids onboarded and um, we sent out a survey, asked them, right now, do you feel like all of your um, strengths and passions are being utilized? Are you able to showcase that at school? And we'll see in a month, she'll send out the survey again. And our hope is that Tract will facilitate the, um, the kids to say that they feel more empowered to show their strengths and, and passions. And that's the other cool thing about it, because there are a lot of tech tools that I introduce students to on a daily basis, but it's often for a particular purpose, right? Hey, I want you to create a video about this content because this is what your teacher wants you to make. But often with track, it's what are you passionate about? What do you love to talk about? What do you love to do at home? Which is why the kids just love it because they like to showcase what they love to do. You know, I want to get back to something that Ari mentioned earlier, which is that kids are mostly used to these days being consumers, right? They have their phones, they have their videos. But one of the things that we want to work on here is helping students become creators. And the hard part about that is, is not is that, you know, the world is not all full of tech coaches. We want to be able to teach our teachers how to foster that creativity, how to foster those skills. Ari, when we're looking at this, what are the skills that we should be teaching our students? Is it the, is it the idea of storyboarding, creating, producing? Is it the idea of what is YouTube? What is TikTok? What are those things that we should be saying at a professional development day to help our teachers do this even on the days that we are not around as coaches. Yeah. I mean, I think I always think there's a, there's a dual side to looking at it. It's like, okay, amongst adults, when we're talking amongst each other, we should like talk about it in a certain way. And when we talk about it, we're mainly talking about it in terms of the four C's of, you know, creativity, communication, collaboration, critical thinking. These are the skills that, the knowledge economy asks for, that employers ask for, uh, they're highly in demand. Um, they require the ability to think for yourself. And we see that in the job market where, you know, continuous repetitive tasks are being automated, but then there's this huge demand for people who can curate the information out there, come up with new ideas, leverage technology. And that's kind of where the job market is going. Now, if you were to tell a kid that like, I don't care, right? Like, <laughs> great, like I'm a kid, like don't put me in like some career pathway at age six telling me like, this is what I'm gonna be when, I'm, when I grow up. So, and I totally agree with that. Like I didn't know what I wanted to be at that age either. So a as a kid, I think it's very clear they wanna be YouTube TikTok creators. It's the number one thing they wanna be when they grow up right now, right? So when, when they say that to you and internalize that and say, awesome, like the skills you're gonna need are you're going to need to be great at content creation. What does that really mean? That means media literacy, researching, creating media. You're going to have to be a great communicator. You're going to have to have charisma, presence on camera. Great. Same thing. Writing, communication, uh, you know, putting your thoughts together, like having good body language. It's not too dissimilar from like speech and debate. Then they're going to say, uh, well, then you also need to you know, learn video editing. You need to learn about audio all these other things. Um, and that's really the process of, you know, creating through, through video. And so to me, that's, that's the kind of shift in how you can, how you can approach anything a kid comes up with is don't dismiss it and say, Hey, this is a bad idea, or this is not a good use of your time. This can happen oftentimes when you hear they want to be a YouTuber, TikTok creator, or this can happen oftentimes when they say my passion is gaming or like my passion is, you know, something like that you know, find the links, find the, the ways that that could actually turn into something productive. And gaming is a great example because oftentimes people think of gaming, they're like, please, can my, can my child, can this kid like game a little bit less? They're like addicted to the tablet and they just like can't get off of it. And yes, that's unfortunately the reality in a lot of cases, but there are links for all the popular games and like history and engineering and game design and math and science. And so that's, I think, the, the, the big opportunity where if we can help kids see those links, then they can apply those interests and passions into something very productive, um, especially with the right structure. Yeah. And I, to, just to add to that, Ari, the whole time you're talking about all of that, my head is just going digital citizenship. It's, it's yeah. a place to have the conversations, the hard conversations 
that students need to have more often, not just once a year during Digital Citizenship Week. They need to be having those conversations with their teachers on a regular basis. It's so, so important. And that's the link. And what a more authentic, what, what a more authentic way to do that than right here with them creating and something that, again, they're passionate about. The, yeah, and I think w w one thing is is kind of like a, a crazy shift is like I was actually in one of the first first grade classes that had the Internet and it was like transformative. But the version of the Internet we had was like everybody huddle around this giant computer that you can use one at a time that has like very limited things you can do. And it was a very wholesome Internet, right? Like the people on the Internet were kind of more academic. Like fast forward to today. It's not a very wholesome internet and it's not necessarily kid safe. Even the things that like you want kids to use have these like unmoderated sections that you kind of are like, please, like, I wish I knew that was there. Um, and so you kind of take a step back and you're like, well, kids are finding their way everywhere on the internet. Like, let's be real. And when they're finding their way there, it's not exactly pretty. People are saying mean things to each other. Uh, it's not productive. It's generally anonymous. And so a lot of bad habits can form if there's opportunities for kids to access more parts of like the real internet as kids uh, in a sheltered, safe way, they can build those skills that, that Megan was talking about. And that's super, super, super important because the information is all out there at this point. So it's more about, you know, curating and finding. And it's also more about being able to, you know, communicate with others in, in the right way online and also not, you know, be so sensitive that things happen and all of a sudden like your, your self-worth is ruined because of some interaction online. And so these are, these are new things we're figuring out, right? Because these are not, you know, they didn't exist, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I, I think the question that I'm coming down with is how do we do that? Right. Megan, where's a good place to start with this, right? Like I got some great teachers. I got some amazing students. If I'm going to be, coming up with an action plan to try bringing in project-based learning, student-directed learning, media creation, where's the first place that I start? Do I start in the classroom? Do I start at my administrator and say, hey, how about this concept? Um, how did you start this? Um, well, it, I think it starts with teacher buy-in. Um, and then as soon as a teacher sees the power of it, um, you're going to get student buy-in. And if it's good, you know, if it works, then it works and everybody picks it up. So from our district's perspective, it started with the teachers and it spread through the teachers and the students and the passion of the students. I was in a classroom the other day and the teacher has a, a slotted time for track time, right? It was track Tuesday. I think it, she, she does, you know, she, they get an hour every Tuesday or something. And something happened with the schedule and the kids lost like a little bit of their track Tuesday. And you should have heard the groans. I mean, it was, oh, we're losing, you know, some, of some track time. And then you just know that, that that's a tool that the kids truly enjoy using it. And it's fun for them. And the teachers enjoy watching. That's the thing too. When you see a teacher's eyes light up because their kids are having so much fun and enjoying it, I mean, then you know that it's, that it's working. Our, and from my perspective is you can't force teachers or students to use a tool, right? They either like it and want to use it and it works for them. Great. And you can't really, you can't really force it. Um, so we, uh, but we haven't, we haven't had to, but that's just my philosophy. What has the teacher buy-in been like for you? Did it start with one teacher? Did you get a group that you started to do these types of lessons with uh, grade level? It's, it just spreads by word of mouth. Um, this has been very popular at our intermediate school, which is grades three through six, um, especially with our, and our gifted teacher teaches uh, three through six. So with those grades, especially I would say in the fifth and sixth grade, those kids really, they're just in that point where they pick up technology very easily and they see media and they know what they want to create. They just need a little bit of time and experience to work on creating it. And, and then they can really run away with it. Now, Ari, the, the question here is, 
student directed right now if i go back a, a few weeks ago and i'm working with these students on these video projects um it took them a while to realize that the teacher wasn't going to tell them what the next thing was um how do you work with with this whole concept of student directed is it something that you put up on the board and say now this project is yours do you just start asking them questions and then back off into the corner um what's your recommendation on on really changing the learning culture i guess of a, of a of a situation i i often challenge students to understand exactly how powerful technology can be um what was that i read this um very famous book about technology and i'm i'm struggling to remember the name of it right now but he references your smartwatch or your or your smartphone how powerful is your smartphone well, do you realize that your smartphone is probably about 100,000 times more powerful than the computer that took us to the moon in 1969? And when you tell kids that, they're like, wait, this, this phone's more powerful than the computer that took us to the moon? I'm like, yeah. Do you know what you can do with that Chromebook in your hands? Do you know what you can do with you know, all of this technology at your disposal? So think about that the next time you go to make a project with that computer, it can do a lot more than you think it can. That's an awesome story. <laughs> Just, he, he, hearing the, the, yeah. the success of coaches, seeing everything that's yes. going on in here. Ari, I got to tell you, from, from your point of view of seeing what Megan's doing, seeing what other coaches are doing, what does that feel like to know that you're making a difference here? Well, it's incredible. And I think her, her philosophy is spot on. Like anything that comes top down that comes from authority. I mean, it's just no fun, right? Like the authority typically tells you the rules that their boss told you, told them, and then it just like cascades down and it just, you know, it gets worse the farther down it falls. So that, you know, recognizing that, um, you know, people want to be excited about something and the end customer is the student, is the kid. We're all serving those kids. So the more we can orient around the kid and remove like the noise, like the easier I think some of these decisions become. Uh, you know, a lot of these kids are natural leaders and a lot of these kids, especially if given the chance, like can do a lot more than they're doing today. And so a lot of it, you know, starts with something very basic, which is, you know, you telling them like you believe in them and they're capable of doing this and you'll work with them through revisions and like there's no such thing as like failure um like a lot of kids are scared to you know put their stuff out there or even share what they're thinking and so i think it it starts at a very basic level of just showing empathy for what they care about what they're interested in and then providing space for them to actually like feel safe to you know go out of their comfort zone and do something they've never done before and in my personal case you know when i was you know in school what, what was so powerful about creating for your classmates and for your peers is when you create for your teacher, I, I was a pretty smart kid. So like I would do the bare minimum to make like to get the result. So like 89.5 was like the optimal score, right? Because that meant I did the bare minimum amount of work to get the best possible grade since that rounds to an A minus, which is the same as an A. Uh, but when I was doing work for my peers, or when I was doing work that was potentially going to have, you know, public display, oh boy, like, did I, did I turn it up a notch? And that's because now I'm like in front of my classmates and now I want to put my best foot forward. And those dynamics are just, are there. Like kids look up to older kids, your, you know, your older cousin or your older sibling is like, you know, you'll, you'll do anything for them. They told you to, you know, jump off a bridge, you'll jump off a bridge, like, you know, blindly. Right. So I think playing into those dynamics is really positive because the kids will work a lot harder for each other. And if they're given the space to really uh, kind of go out their comfort zone, they also will. Yeah. And to tag off that, Ari, something and something you said earlier, Megan, made me think about the focus on social emotional learning that we've been doing as we've been back in school from the pandemic and just the the things that we try to think of as even my team of how do we motivate these kids and get them to take ownership of their learning and i'm 
pretty new to Tract and what it does and just hearing these success stories from both of you in what Tract has to offer and setting these kids off on their own to create and collaborate with each other. It's it's very encouraging. We've been talking today with Megan Hallberg, an amazing instructional technology coach, all about what she's doing in the classroom. Uh, Megan, as a coach is listening to this and wants to know where do you get started? How do you first start? I'm sure they're asking the question of how to get in touch with you. Where can people find all the great work that you're doing? And what advice would you have out there for the instructional technology coaches that just want to take that first step into helping their students with peer to peer learning? Um, well, you can get in touch with me on Twitter. My handle is at Berg, B-U-R-G underscore Hall, H-U-L-L. And just reach out to me if you have questions. Um, I would say the best place to start is with what you are passionate about. When kids see that their teachers or their coaches are passionate about something, it inspires them too. So when you share that with your students, it's a way to connect and start that relationship building and to build their social and emotional learning. And when they see that you love something, they love it too. So that's the best place to start. Share what you love with your kids and they will love it too. I think that's a great place to end the show right there. That is absolutely awesome. Ari, you're, you know, it's great to have you back on the show. Um, please come back on with more great stories, more great instructional coaches like Megan here. But Ari, I'll give you the last word on here. We're, we're talking students. We're talking creation. We're talking helping teachers learn how to put all this great stuff into their classrooms. What advice do you have as we head into the last half of our school year? Well, I think everyone's at that moment where, you know, the, the high stakes testing is either happening or about to happen. And so that's obviously a stressful time. Some people are getting crushed with weather, absences, kind of you name it. So I think it's the perfect time coming off of that for a nice decompress for your kids, for you. And I think, you know, track is, is really well positioned for that. And so I really encourage everybody to Give it a try. Sign up at teach.track.app. Uh, it's absolutely free. You can get started very quickly and you'll be supported in a way that I think is very unique versus maybe some of the other products you've experienced. Uh, myself and people on my team are available to personally help you get started. Uh, we talked about those onboarding sites. Those are led by real people. The kids are always surprised. They're like, oh, we thought all these people are bots. It's like, no, they're not bots. They're like real people helping you. Uh, but they, I guess they're so used to bots being everywhere that like they think like all these interactions are bots. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hyper personalized. And uh, you know, I, I forget that phrase you just used, Megan, low, high floor. Low floor, low high ceiling. ceiling. Oh, low floor, high ceiling. Okay, low floor, high ceiling. Uh, for kids that need a lot of help and structure, there is that. And so they can start with, you know, a lot more simple structured projects for the kids that are very advanced. They know exactly what their passions are. They're, they're, they're budding in terms of their creative skills. We can help take them further. And the way we do that is really through a, a variety of different content or a variety of different resources, expert, uh, you know, professional creators who can work with those kids. So I would say, you know, get started, no risk. Uh, you'll have a great time. You'll get to interact with me and folks on my team. And uh, we're so excited to, to help and support you. We're going to have all the links to this and all of the great stuff that we're working with tracked on over on our podcast. You can find everything over at Ask the Tech Coach, episode number 186. And, you know, Sue, we've got a great teacher cast instructional coaches network. Again, we just hit over 400 coaches in there. We're, we're aiming for 500 is our next major milestone. Post. We are. We are going to be creating a Facebook guide or an online course all about this, putting in some links to our different shows, some of the different uh, tracked uh, blog posts and stuff like that to help you guys get started with all of this stuff. Sue, what's going on with you these days? And uh, what's your latest video that we can also enjoy over at Tech Imaginations? Well, my latest video is all about the new Google Classroom features and um, some keyboard shortcuts to use in your Google Drive. 
Nice. Certainly check all that stuff out. We're going to make sure all the links are over on AskTheTechCoach.com. I want to say thank you guys out there for supporting Ask the Tech Coach for the last 186 episodes. We've got a lot of great things coming up as we move into the summertime, as we move into ISTE season, and we got a lot more to go over here on the TeacherCast Educational Network. So on behalf of Megan, Ari, and Sue, and everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.